What is up, fellas? NCAA 08, this is the Aggie Dynasty. Pretty much, uh, probably the greatest game I've ever played. Easily the greatest comeback I've ever had um, in the history of any game. Um, fuck Tom Brady's 28-3 in the Super Bowl. We were down by, what, 42 points? Maybe, I think it was upwards of 40-ish points on the road against um, Texas. Bitter rival. This team comes back. Gerard Johnson has like 400-yard passing game. Um, Mike Goodson continues his Heisman streak. Easily the best player in the country, but it did look like Gerard Johnson had one of the highest ceilings in the country with that finish in the second half. What a game. And then almost threw it away with that option pitch to run the option to try to get a first down. Instead, should have just been thinking of ball security. But hey, you know what? It is what it is. The game ended up the way it did. And we ended up getting a win against Texas in that game. Ohio State number two in the country in the BCS rankings. Again, we don't give a shit about a coach's poll, media poll, the computer poll, poll average for the BCS. We need to care about what Condoleezza Rice thinks when it comes to fucking football. We need to care what some TikTok using bitch. You know, it's for sure there's got to be some fucking TikTok user who's got to be somehow on this panel. It's funny as fuck, why the fuck are politicians part of a BCS football panel? As if journalists weren't bad enough to where they don't know shit about football compared to ex-players and coaches. It's pretty funny to me. Instead, they had to one-up themselves and put fucking uh, politicians in that group. But uh, making his way into the finalist is Draw Johnson. There is one more game. This is the round of conference standings and whatnot, or uh, conference championships heading in but we're looking at the uh, awards and whatnot but taking a look at the nfl week five um, some interesting outcomes in uh, week four such as the jets getting their first win of the season zach wilson's first win of his career win of his career and uh shit like that but looking at thursday night football possibly the most competitive game on the entire slate there's another one to talk about later but still um just at least on paper, and according to spread, uh, it appears to be the most competitive game on the slate of all the games of Week 5. Rams against Seahawks. Rams have ten so there's about 80% to 90% of money on the Rams getting the 2.5 spread. It's interesting to me. I don't think the Rams have been all too consistent on the road in Seattle. Seattle is a different animal when you're at home. Uh, well... Seattle's a different animal at home, and it's going to be a different animal to face them on the road when Seattle's at home. Yeah, does that make sense? But I think it would be a smart choice to select the under in this game and to select um, the Seahawks to cover the spread in this game. And I think it's a possibility that uh, you know Rams are awakened from the Cardinals' loss and uh, pretty much over that hangover of beating the Buccaneers, but at the same time, the Seahawks team ends up showing some s nice fortitude headed in to this week, considering that th they just did not look good for at least a quarter to a first half of football against 49ers, and the 49ers are a pretty good team overall. And uh, I think the Seahawks could definitely win this game. They've got the pieces in it. I think... Overall, you're looking at uh, maybe the Rams still coming off. You know, just it's not necessarily a short week in general. But um, the Rams are making their way to Seattle for this one. I just don't think that 90% of people should be betting money on the Rams in this one. They're 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games against the spread against the Seahawks. And now they find themselves against the Seahawks again. And it's on the road. So I'd bet the under and I'd bet... Uh, for the Seahawks to cover the spread of two and a half. And I think the Seahawks could win this game. Patriots against Texans. That'll be interesting in itself. Um, Damian Harris has been losing a little bit of um, touches. But mind you, this Patriots team, um, it's just they've faced a couple good teams lately. And uh, the script doesn't really play out for Damian Harris to do well. But it does for this game. If there was any game that Damian Harris could come in and have a very good game, I think it would be against this Texans team. Texans team, one of the bottom half, maybe the bottom like third, bottom like five teams against the run in all of football. And also, too, I expect the Patriots defense to be in a good spot as well. Um, again, could be a low-scoring affair in this one in general, but I could see the Patriots still scoring 21 
to 25, possibly 27 if they get a couple field goals during this game. But Damian Harris is set up for a good game. Patriots should win that one. Jets against Falcons. This should be interesting because um, the Falcons just look like doo-doo. We know the Jets were going to be doo-doo heading into this year. Um, but at the same time, I mean, what is this, a game in London? Is that what it is? It's a game in London, I think, between the Jets and the Falcons. It does say 8.30 a.m. Now, my guess is that, yeah, that's the London game. They're starting to do the London games. But um, what an interesting match. It sounds fun, though. It does sound fun between these two teams to face each other in London. So it's two shit teams, but at the same time. I mean, should be a fun game. I think the Falcons end up getting this one. Again, the Falcons are going to be probably getting a decent amount of their um, offense moving through the air since the Jets have actually been pretty good in the run defense this season with Quinn and Williams and company in the middle. I think the Falcons should be able to win that game against the Jets. Um, don't really anticipate the Jets keeping some bit of momentum or something heading into a game like this. Lions against the Vikings. Lions just got absolutely dumped on by David Montgomery in a terrible offensive line with the Chicago Bears. It only makes sense to think the Vikings are going to control this game. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to prevent the Lions from getting up and down the field because in itself, too, I could see a good game, good bounce back game from DeAndre Swift, but Dalvin Cook should be all over this game. Should set up well. The dude should be getting at least 100 yards on the ground. Uh, maybe 150 of total yards. Um, he should definitely be moving like this Kansas State running back, though, for the, against this uh, Detroit Lions team, especially since the Lions are on the road yet again. Again, yeah, it's not like Soldier Field, but still. Expect Dalvin Cook possibly get two or three touchdowns at his ceiling in this game with over 100 yards on the ground, possibly a 200-yard game. Don't want to get above, uh, ahead of ourselves, but still. I expect that to be Dalvin Cook game for that. Eagles against Panthers. This is an interesting one because I think these are like similar teams to where, you know, now Stephen Gilmore is going to be with the Panthers. I don't know if he's going to be with them this week. Wouldn't surprise me if he is just because that's kind of a shutdown corner like type archetype for him, even this late into his career. The Panthers definitely needed help with J.C. Horn getting injured. And this defense is actually solid enough to where um, it could give the Eagles a little bit of fits. But also I could see possibly – Miles Sanders getting more involved in this game, and I think that would just be the wise choice anyways. But not only that, the Panthers have um, been pretty overrated when it comes to rush defense. I think their passing defense last year, too, passing defense was phenomenal. But um, overall, I'm just uh, not trusting their rush defense, and I think this Eagles offensive line is vastly improved compared to their injury-ridden season last year, and I think Miles Sanders can take advantage of that. And there you go. I think uh, Miles Sanders can take advantage of that. He should have a good game overall. And I think uh, you could definitely anticipate a Robbie Anderson type game. If you saw Tyreek Hill getting up and down the field, um, you could definitely see Robbie Anderson. Because I think here's the thing, right? Eagles are just not good enough on defense to really stop two weapons um, throughout a whole entire game. All the focus went to Travis Kelsey last week and Tyreek Hill had probably the biggest uh, ceiling game you're going to see out of any other wide receiver this season. In that game, if you had him in Daily Fantasy, I'll tell you, I did not. And that's uh, that's that. I think the Panthers um, could be on upset alert again to lose another game after that loss to the Cowboys, and I think Miles Sanders could be sneaky good this week against an overrated rush defense. Saints against the Washington football team going to be interesting to see how this pans out because I think the Redskins, or Redskins, Washington football team actually lines up well against the Saints considering Washington has given up a decent amount through the air on defense. They're not, they haven't just been, they have not been performing like the defense that we uh, became accustomed to last season. And I d really think that if anything their front seven can take away the advantage of having Kamara on there and uh, you kind of saw how it was when um, Kamara wasn't getting much on well he had 120 yards but still um, against the Giants and I expect um, I expect them to try to rely on Kamara and I think it's just going to end up playing well for the um, Washington football team I think this is a week you finally see Curtis Samuel get involved quite a bit Terry McLaren, um, he's still scary Terry, 
And uh, overall, though, I think it sets up well um, for this football team that possibly, I mean, you could have a good game out of Antonio Gibson as well. He's not, I'm not going to say he's Saquon Barkley, but still, you saw even a uh, New York Giants team come in and have a good game with Saquon against this Saints team that is starting to try to show their face to where they're not really that different compared to the Panthers as well. And I think the Panthers might be better than them. And I don't think the Panthers are much better than a middle-of-the-road team right now. So I think a uh, football team ends up getting a win at home against them. Titans against Jaguars. Derrick Henry's been known for destroying this Jaguars team, even when it had Jalen Ramsey in their last little bit, Miles Jack and company, Calais Campbell and whatnot. Still able to have these 200-yard games, especially that famous one on Thursday night where he had like a 99 or 97, 98, 99-yard run to where he's stiff-arming fools and whatnot. And I think uh, with that being said, it just sets up well for the Titans. They need a win. But also, too, I mean, if A.J. Brown and Julio Jones are going to be injured still, that offense looked very limited, however much Derrick Henry was still able to pull that out against the Jets team. It's actually been pretty good against the run. So, overall, I'd have to say you may see a possibility of a, the first win for Trevor Lawrence and company since Tennessee has just not been. Let's be honest. New York Jets don't have the weapons that even, you know, a, GG, a DJ Chark, Dan Arnold, and a Marvin Jones that Trevor Lawrence has. And people are saying, you know, Trevor Lawrence is by far the best quarterback in this rookie class. And you're seeing, again, another situation where this Titans team is just not in an excellent spot. It's a pretty shady spot. And they could lose to another rookie quarterback for a second consecutive game. I think they're, they're definitely on upset alert and... Uh, Derek, even though Derrick Henry set up for a high usage game yet again. Dolphins on the road against Tampa Bay. I think now you're looking at a Leonard Fournette type game right here to where Dolphins have been piss poor against the run. Even a Quentin Nelson-less type of Colts offense that has not been all too good or as, a, as much as expected in the running game with Jonathan Taylor. Finally had 100 yards on the ground and a touchdown for Mr. Taylor against the Dolphins in their win. And looking at it, it really sets up well for the likes of Leonard Fournette in this rushing game to finally show their face and what they can do. Saw it against the Patriots. A lot of usage. He seems to be the number one running back by far now. Stop dicking with Ronald Jones, folks. He can't really even catch. The only reason why he gets these like touchdown runs out of nowhere is because you're not anticipating it. And what a little stretch right here by uh, right outside linebacker 44. See the pick six right here. You're going to see more shit soon. But it's Buccaneers team. The matchup's there. Leonard Fournette's usage is finally there. And you're going to see a nice game from him. And a win, obviously. Packers against the Bengals. This should be interesting. But overall, um, Jair Alexander, you've seen him in the slot in all these years. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if Jamar Chase ends up having a good game who he ends up trying to be around for the most part. Um, sets up well for Jamar Chase compared. There you go. Another one. Another pick six. The man's feeling it. And there you go. Touchdown, baby. But uh, Jamar Chase should, uh, should be in a decent spot right here. Uh, depends on if T. Higgins is going to return. I think, um, I think depending on just how bad the Jaguars' rushing offense has been this season, how well they did against the Bengals, you could see a very good game from Aaron Jones as well, um, since they're road favorites. and But also, too, Devontae Adams is also in there. So I think you're expecting a great game from either Devontae or Adam Jones, or uh, Aaron Jones, and then possibly a good game from Jamar Chase, um, since I think Tyler Boyd might be the, uh, the dude to uh, get shadowed by Jair. Broncos at Steelers should be interesting for this one because we finally saw the Ravens were kind of digging into deep passes against the Broncos, but also, too, it's the Steelers. Could this be a game to where it's an incredibly low-scoring affair to where the Broncos very much are not going to let them run the ball? Maybe another great game by Deontay Johnson, maybe even better than it was last week. To where he's going to be relied upon as being one of the more underrated dudes that people don't look at. To where he gets that amount of usage. He's basically, uh, when you think about it, he's basically at the point that I think Zeke was at a couple of weeks ago. To where people weren't realizing Zeke still the number one running back on this team. 
still getting a ton of usage, but people weren't just comparing him to such. And uh, Deontay Johnson is, what, top three in the league in targets and target share, I believe. And there you go. So could be another great game by Deontay Johnson to jump on that before everybody else does. Bears against the Raiders. Bears have not been, like, their defense has been pretty impressive, but they're going to be facing a Raiders team here in Las Vegas. And I really don't anticipate the Bears getting a win here. I think it could be a pretty good game by um, Josh Jacobs. I don't expect this Bears team to get what they did against the Lions on the rush offense. Maybe you see a good game from Allen Robinson finally. But I think overall this Raiders team could be in a good spot to either Josh Jacobs has a good game or you see the likes of maybe a Henry Ruggs or Darren Waller just returns back to having a huge game. Uh, nice ceiling game right there. So I expect the Raiders to win that one. Browns and Chargers is the other game that I have to say is very, very competitive. Um, damn, fucking Javorski laying right down the field. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, but with this Browns team, so Browns have been stellar in their front seven. I mean, Browns are what like are a better version, I think, than what the uh, football team was last year. The Washington football team was in their front seven last season. And I think they're going to do well of stopping uh, Austin Eckler, Eckler, at least on the ground. But you don't know necessarily what's going to happen in the passing game and whatnot. I think you could see a very good game out of Keenan Allen this week because he's been his price has been dropping drastically. Um, he still has one of the highest target shares, one of the highest red zone target uh, shares in all of football. I mean, like, top three, him and Mike Williams. And not only that, I think Mike Williams is going to see Denzel Ward on the outside. And that running game is going to be stopped quite well. So I expect Keenan Allen to have a good game. And also, too, I think you can run it back. I was wrong about a ceiling game last week since uh, Nick Chubb. I think just without Jarvis Landry, this offense looks so limited to where the focus goes so much on the running game. But he's still with loaded boxes. Nick Chubb is still getting the type of returns on at least on his rushing game that's like 85% of what we expected Derrick Henry. Even on not getting, he doesn't get even 20 rushes on most of these games and he's still getting 95 yards or 25 rushes even in some of these games and he's still getting just over 100 yards. Hasn't gotten much of these touchdowns. Chargers have been known as a team, have been a little bit porous on uh, the rush defense and I expect um a very, very solid bounce-back game by Nick Chubb. You might get a couple touchdowns. I'm just really banking on that because it just, what, the touchdown regression is going to officially push in his way, and I think he's going to have a good game. And I think the Browns end up getting a win here against the Chargers. Giants against the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are going to win this one. I think another, you know, setup for another great game would be the likes of a Zeke going up against this Giants team. This offensive line has been just stellar in the run game. And I think Zeke should have another solid game against the Giants, and the Cowboys should definitely win this game. 49ers against the Cardinals. This could seem like one of those games that um, uh, the Cardinals end up losing this one because, you know, because uh, honestly, I mean, now we finally get the thing that I'm talking about. Kyle Shanahan is a glorified Cliff Kingsbury because I know Cliff Kingsbury makes some dumb decisions sometimes, but his offensive mind is just similar to the likes of of Kyle Shanahan, so I don't expect, uh, understand why all the love is in one way. Maybe just the years he's been, he's been in a couple Super Bowls, one as an OC and the other one as a head coach. I expect the 49ers to get a win here, um, and I expect them to do a decent amount on the ground um, to get that win because uh, this offensive line is good enough to deal with that Chandler Jones, and then I do think that the Ravens are going to beat the Colts on Monday night, and then I think – that the Chiefs should be able to uh, showcase a little bit of a uh, limit, uh, eh, maybe limit this Bills offense a little bit, just enough for uh, the Chiefs to be able to outscore them in this one. I think it's going to be for sure a Travis Kelsey game, and I think the game is just only going to be like 17 to 20. It's going to feel like a playoff game. The Chiefs are going to win. As always, fellas, take it easy. See y'all next time.